This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we're back at it. Um, as chair of the Tilton Conservation Commission, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to the executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with that order, I am now confirming that we are utilizing this electronic meeting for all members of the Tilton Conservation Commission and have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting on through this platform. And the public has access to the cars contemporaneously to listen and if necessary, participate in the meeting through dialing in at the following phone number of 1-866-899-4679 with a passcode of 238-034-701 or by clicking on the link at the address of GoToMeeting, excuse me, gotomeet.me slash town of hat <laughs> dash Tilton backslash conservation or by going through the Tilton's website and looking at under the meeting agenda and following the link. We have previously gave notice to the public uh, of the necessary information for access to this meeting, including <clears throat> access to the meeting on GoToMeeting or telephonically. Instructions have also been provided on the website of the Tilton, town of Tilton, www.tiltonnh.org under the agendas and schedule. If anybody has a problem, please call me at 286-4268 or email me at cmitchell at metrocast.net. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and will be rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are gonna be taken during the meeting shall be done by a roll call. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call of all the attendants. When each member states their presence, please also state whether or not there's anyone else in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the state's right to know law. So let's go ahead. I will go ahead now and under the participates, participants, I'm gonna now uh, unmute all. Okay, one at a time. Kathy. Present. Nobody else is upstairs with me. Yeah, yeah I'm and alone in the sunroom. Ellen. I am home alone in the back guest room. Bob Hardy. Present. Speak up, Bob. I can't you. hear you, Bob. No, you just unmuted yourself. Unmute yourself, Bob. Now try it. Uh, I barely audible, Bob. You might need to get closer to the microphone or whatever. Or speak up. You're not coming through, but uh, anyway, Jim Cropsey. Present and alone. Uh, Mr. Scanlon. John Scanlon, present. I'm by myself here. And Mr. Rushlow. Present and alone. Excellent. Bob, we'll work on that uh, sound on yours. If you get a chance up at the top right, I think you can go up under settings and just test your microphone and see whether or not it's working. While you're doing that, we'll go ahead and get a general stat on the meeting. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. First thing on the agenda says, uh, minutes from the previous meeting. 
I'm assuming that everyone got a copy. Yes. If anyone would like to move. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes as written by our fine Kathy Mitchell. <laughs> um, I will restrict those last comments. <laughs> no, no, I made the motion. Okay. It's been moved by Helen. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, Paul, thank you. Any questions about the minutes? Seeing none, I'll do a quick roll call vote, knowing that our diligent secretary will be tracking all these written, I mean, uh, roll call votes. Kathy, how do you uh, vote on the minutes? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Jan Landry. Accept them. Yes. Jim Cropsey. Same. Ellen. Yes. John. Yes. All. Accept as presented. And Bob Hardy, if you want to uh, just wave or something, we'll try to see you, or you can check your settings. Okay, the minutes are approved. Um, Dan, the loom project. So the only progress I've made is talking to um, one of my friends from um, the Northfield Conservation Commission. And I mean, my goal this month is to try to write the article because when I had talked to, um, or try to finish writing the article, when I last talked to um, uh, the Audubon, they had recommended putting out something closer to when the fishing started again, which should be, I think it's, I don't, I'm not sure the date. Do you know the, what do you might know when fishing starts? Probably, is it mid April? Actually, I think uh, uh, salmon and lake trout uh, open up April 1st. Okay. So that was my goal to try to get something out by then um, to kind of correspond with that when people are starting to think about fishing. So that's where that is at. So still in slow motion, but in motion. Oh, well, I um, earlier had a meeting with the One is One Watershed Network. And uh, the, one of the discussions that they were talking about had to do with uh, not only uh, the monofilament line, but also uh, containers for people that deposit any kind of lead sinkers and things that they might yes. have. And I know that they're planning on trying to do that this summer at multiple boat ramps. So the sooner you can get rolling, if you need any help, let me know, and we can go ahead and try to help you with uh, maybe constructing some containers and whatever. But I do think it would be a good idea to get a press release out fairly soon. Maybe uh, we could focus on the Sun Conquer Monitor, maybe even uh, Union Leader, who knows. The LPC does actually have a program in motion already for um, the lead sinker removal. So they, the, they're, um, their summer help will do like um <clears throat> if people bring their lead sinkers they'll give them like a um a coupon to purchase more like it's a 10 last year it was like a 10 dollar um it was a buyback program the lead sinker buyback program so that's i mean i think if the winnesquam watershed network could co would contact the lpc i'm sure they'd work with them with that because they always try every year to get as much information out on that as possible and hand out those coupons. So just another thought, but yeah, that's that sounds like a plan. Okie doke. Um, let's move on to B, the Winnesquam Watershed Network. Uh, they're in the middle of trying to all, by the way, they hired a uh, part-time staffer, a uh, woman, young lady who is, uh, already, I guess, got a master's degree in something, and uh, she is working, uh, I can't tell you the exact number of hours a week, but she is really being very helpful in contacting a lot of people. And so that's that's good. Um, they're moving along with doing some strategic planning. Um, I don't know, I can keep, I'll try to uh, send copies out of their minutes if you, anyone really wants to read them. I think that's enough. By the the only other thing was that uh, Kathy and I heard last night. I guess it was. It was last night. 
that this uh, planned sale of the uh, state school property, they're trying to, the governor's trying to put in the Hearn State Park as part of that deal. And uh, it was reported out by Cindy Warmington, who is one of the governor's council members. And she was very concerned about it and said that if anybody has any concerns about uh, trying to keep that uh, state property with the beach in the, that undeveloped area as a separate parcel, then we need to move and do something soon, like sending letters in and stuff. If that's anything that you think we should get involved with, uh, let me know and we could probably concoct some kind of a letter circulated amongst the people and see where we go from there. I just have a question about that, Chuck. So are they, were they thinking about like selling Ahern State Park as well? Is that what you're saying? Along with the state property or abutting it? The, the report was that the governor wants to include as they sell that property because as a carrot, they wanted to throw in the state park land and the beach and the waterfront property with it. And apparently that it, in the sun, even the uh, mayor, Mr. Hosmer, has come out opposed to that and apparently has already been in touch with the governor. The only thing is right now what the Winnesquam Watershed Network was looking for was any kind of proof where they could find something either in writing or whatever that the governor was planning on including that. Otherwise, it's hearsay. Yeah, that's a huge birding and wildlife area, and I'm 100% sure that you could get, or they could get, quite a few people to um, want to preserve that area. There's, um, like on um, on the birding list in New Hampshire, it's like a designated um, hotspot for several different migrating birds. Again, just a thought. And is that the part furthest down? It also has a lot of loon, a loon, a lot of loon wildlife down in that area. I'm not sure about loons, but it's a huge. There's a lot of warblers, a lot of um. There's just a lot of like um, migrating like spring birds that are there. And I know when I went last year, there was many birders that were there, and um, there have been birding like when you could have them. There was like birding excursions there that people would meet to um, ID birds with different um birding experts in the state that would go there so i'll have to i can look into that check and see if there's like if there's something um at the state park that has like it's, if it's a designated area or what but i i'm just wondering if people are aware of that that um that bird i think oh. right now in, in you know everyone is kind of amongst the those talking about it and, and it was mm -hmm. a big concern of everyone on the Winnesquam Watershed Network because obviously it's on Lake Winnesquam. But yeah. one of the things right now is it's kind of hard to uh, go out and say, well, we understand until we can find some proof that that's what the governor is going to do. And apparently it would should require legislative action or an action by the legislature to actually include the state park. But I've heard that the governor doesn't care what the legislature thinks that, but that he's planning on it. Now that's at least according to Cindy Warmington. So anyway, I just wanted to advise you. And if we uh, can, I, as individuals, uh, feel free to, to send the governor an email and tell him that uh, we feel that that property needs to be not included, but the state to, the sale of the state, the old state school. Do we need the permission of the, so we don't know. So I was just going to say that even without any factual information saying that it is part of a proposed deal to sweeten the deal as, as was ref referenced, we could still write a letter saying as a conservation commission saying that <clears throat> as a, a town um, that is near that area, in the lakes region that we would we understand there is a lot of discussion on the sale of that property and would strongly advocate that Ahern State Park remain a state park to provide public access to our water shores for things such as you know bird watching you know public access because what what we could I think it would be true to say 
um, unless somebody tells me otherwise, that most of the shoreline uh, is being sold to private entities and it limits the access of the citizens in the lakes region. Okay, no. I think we could probably do that. Uh, should there be a motion that uh, someone would like to make and then uh, we can, uh, uh, Kathy and I can sit down and kind of propose a letter and then circulate it for your, any editing? So I'd make a motion that we write a letter with that sort of tenor that, you know, under any particular sale that we would strongly advocate that Ahern State Park remain a state park for public access for the citizens. Is there a second? second that. Yeah, I second that. Seconded by Jan. Any other additional discussion? Okay, I'll do a quick roll call. This time I'll start with Paul. Support that motion. Uh, John. I'm in favor. Bob. I have to abstain. Okay. I hear you fine, by the way. Uh, good. Jim good. I, 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 I'd love to vote, but because of uh, the division owning that park, I'm abstaining. Not a problem. Jim Cropsey. Yay. Yay, okay. Helen, yes. Yes, Helen. I don't have any deals there anymore. <laughs> okay, and Jan, you support it. Mm -hmm. Kathy? Yes. Okay. Uh, it passes. Earth Day. Clean up activities at Buffalo Park. Uh, Kathy? <laughs> We had talked about this at the last meeting that there were some Facebook do-gooders who were talking about going in and cleaning out things. And I guess the thought was maybe we just make it a very simple thing that we go in and pick up brush and keep, just be outside for a couple hours, keep it short, keep it simple. Kathy, the Park Commission has stepped up. I've got a flyer here, Chuck, if you let me share it. Absolutely. Go ahead. Share it on your screen. You should be able to click on that gray button at the bottom where it says screen. Yeah, it says become the presenter to start sharing your screen. Not let me share. Well, let me go up here. Uh, Bob Hardy Web. I'll tell you what, Bob. If you've got it right there as a document, email it to me, and I'll put it up. Okay. So as we wait with anticipation to see this flyer. The other thing we could do, and I'd be happy to take a first crack at it, is just uh, you know, throw out a challenge to our communities um, to engage in Earth Day events and to record it and you know share it back to the town's Facebook page and we'll put it up or something like that. Do we need permission from the selectmen to do something like that? or? I don't think you do. The, the Conservation Commission has a, a Facebook page page and we control that uh, also a web I mean, a website too so it's yeah. not everybody comfortable with that kind of thing i was listening to the waypoint has a sleep out they do every year and this year they're doing a virtual sleep out so you sleep out in your yard and raise money for homeless kids in New Hampshire and I was like what kind of a, a neat idea to keep people involved in sharing that they can and we could do the same thing um, you know throw something out about Earth Day even if it's not Buffalo Park and helping to clean up but you know just getting some awareness out there and, and asking people to share back and, and we'll share what they're doing to sort of put out all the positivity. Okay. Did you get it? Uh, I am logging into my Outlook right now. I can post that on our Facebook 
website and also on our um, Conservation Commission website. Okay, is everybody comfortable with that? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. All right, I'll send something out to everybody. Okay, give me a second. Uh, I gotta go back. How's that, Bob? Looks good. Everybody see it okay? Yep. I like the buffalo. Thank you. <laughs> Clean up Buffalo Park. That's great. I love it. That's great. Okay. Anything else on 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 the the cleanup day? Bob, okay. if you send a copy of that to me, I'll put it up on the website and on the um, Facebook page. You want it as JPEG or a PDF, Kathy? I don't care. Okay, I'll just forward Chuck's email to you then. <laughs> Since we don't talk to one another. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got to figure out now since the screen has gone crazy uh, how I can get back to stop sharing. Anyway, in the meantime, let's go on to the next item. Uh, Wait, step me. back a second. I'm sorry. John. Yes, um, I don't know if anybody else saw, but I believe well, Juliet, um, our legislator, has been appointed onto the Water Access Committee or something for the state um, that she might want to know about that, too, and how we feel so that, um, you know, I don't know if uh, you know, she can spread the word not to um, sell Hearn Park if it comes up. We can see see all of our representatives on our letter to the governor. That's a good idea. Counselor. A lot of four one votes. <laughs> How are we doing? Okay, so uh, we will send that a copy of the uh, that information to. Uh, let's see, let me try to get rid of that. See what happens. No, I'm trying to get rid of the sharing screen, but that's okay. You have to just get your own uh, monitor. At any rate, I'm having some issues with this. So, at any rate, um, town meeting, Kathy. Uh, a town meeting, the subject of MB tractor purchasing, or no, not purchasing, being given the roadway was defeated in the sense that it was postponed indefinitely. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I don't think anyone did. No. I do think it would still be great to continue to send a lot of the selectmen referencing many of the things that one of our selectmen and members of this commission stated at that particular hearing to recommend that if the if this continues to be a discussion, to put it under conservation easement. Well, interestingly enough, since you bring this up, this afternoon I checked out the um, web page or the minutes of the planning board, and I have begun to calm down, but not much. On January 9th, the engineer for MB told the planning board that he would be meeting with the Conservation Commission before the end of January. And unless I miss something, that didn't happen. And on February at the planning board meeting, 
he said that he had met with the Conservation Commission and that we were satisfied with his responses. And the land use person said that they had met with the Conservation Commission and everything had been resolved. Oh, um, should we be writing a letter to all of them that they're not articulating the actual uh, timeline of events? What I thought I might do with your permission would be to send the land use secretary um, an email suggesting that someone should um, amend the minutes because there were several inaccuracies, namely that Chris Netto never met with the Conservation Commission and that we did not agree that everything was fine and dandy. The other, the other thing, John, just a sec, was there are two things here. There was where they met with us about the the pipes and the um, the drainage swale and all that stuff. This is about merging the two lots, building the building, and the fire department is asking them to do something with landscaping and ground cover. But I thought we had done that too. And we aren't mentioned as having done that. John. Yeah, um, just in case anybody doesn't know, I am officially a planning board member now. So um, under other business, the first planning board meeting that I am attending is tomorrow night. I would like to bring this up and have those minutes amended. Yes. Um, wow. So if you can send the information or if any comments on uh, if you think that's a good way to do it. I think that's the way to do it. I think that's the way to do it. We're not attacking anybody. We're just making sure that the evidence is correct. We're setting the record straight. Mm -hmm. And John, uh, also the fact that uh, Mr. Netto still needs to meet with the Conservation Commission and has not done so and has not been in touch with us. But I believe it's been approved. Well, uh, one yeah. other one, one other little piece of tidbit while we're still talking about Bitter and Lane is that uh, if you didn't know it, um, Scott Davis was the one who had at town meeting had suggested that uh, he objected to consideration of that mm -hmm. proposal. He also mentioned the size of the water main that was in there and crossed on Bitter and Lane and made a point of talking to, uh, of telling us at least, uh, that the water district was never been in touch. No one had ever been in touch with the water district about uh, this transfer. And to have that water main um, on private property is, is a no-no. If they ever had a, a pipe burst in there, and it's on private property that that would knock out water to all virtually everything up there at exit 20. I can go on and on about other things that Scott was talking about, but I also got a list of which I believe I did share with everyone of all those deeds and information. And that was not even made public or even given to the select board until two days before or Thursday night, right before town meeting. And I'd had that discussion also with Pat Constantino, who shared those documents with me. But I, how, I, I mean, in my estimation, I don't know how anyone could go with the giving of that land without having had all that information well in advance and contacted mm -hmm. everyone. However, so I think probably we could move on from town meeting briefly. <laughs> oh boy. Anything like you can send me. I'll get you a packet. You got it. Now, uh, under item number three, uh, reappointments. Um, Kathy has, I'm going to say this, <laughs> uh, has probably spent 20 or 30 hours of non billable time, of course, researching and going back, including finding this website that actually has um, links to old websites 
and trying to straighten out this whole thing because if you looked at the town of tilton's website it said that uh bob helen and 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 me the three of us the three of us were uh reappointed last year for uh and our terms expire in 2023 they only have jim expiring in 2022 and they've got everybody else expiring in 2021. Now, part of the issue was, and we have some emails confirming our communication with Jeannie over this. What was the date on that one last year, Kathy? Um, You'll find it. <laughs> well, you'll... Well, you're looking for that date. Let me tell you that um, I have been in touch with Ben. And as we know, he is not, um, he's probably technologically challenged and hasn't been attending our meetings recently. So I called him and I asked him whether or not he was still interested in being a member of the Conservation Commission. And he actually suggested that he would like to be an alternate. So, in uh, Kathy, what was the date of your contact email with Jeannie? Contact. Oh, oh, uh, 2019. Anyway, long time ago. Oh, I got uh, it. March 27th, 2019. And at that time, we had contacted Jeannie because we knew that the re that back in 2018 there was some kind of um, uh, erroneous communications and paperwork filed in order to with the town clerk in order to make sure that everything was correct. And as you will recall, with nine people. Dan being uh, added in after Suki left, there was this uh, issue of who's full time, who's not full time, uh, reappointment schedules, and all this went on and on and on. And Cindy always maintained that she was she was correct, and that uh, so um, tonight my suggestion is that uh, we do some reappointments tonight. And um, the town is also requiring, and I'm not sure why, maybe John knows, but Kathy's holding up some W-4s. The town is requiring that everyone submit a new W-4 to the town. And so we are going to, um, I will in the next day or so, mail those out to everyone so that you will get one. So please fill it out, and when you get a chance, either mail it into the town or uh, drop it off at town hall. Additionally, now, everyone who is being appointed or reappointed to a committee has to go through that paperwork, and I will email everyone a PDF copy of that, and I can drop one off for Paul if you have any trouble printing it out, Paul. And I think everyone else can print out the PDF files. So please, when it gets around to it, uh, those of those who are being reappointed today will uh, please fill those out and manage to get it somehow or other to town hall so that you can be properly sworn in by a town clerk. John, At I have a question point. because Cindy still has you down as being up this year and you should not be up until next year. Did you fill out the paperwork last year? Um, I don't recall. It was the pandemic that threw us all into a loop. Everything was closed. And so you may have to fill out some stuff. We'll okay. play it by you. I remember something uh, in, I think it was 2019, and they alleged that uh, a number of us were not properly sworn in, and they wanted to uh, dis disavow our meetings and votes. So uh, don't mention that again. It, it is kind of important to uh, uh, to get this stuff straight, and I and I guess I'm good until 2022. But I thought that I thought that John was supposed to be in with me. He is, and I have evidence that it's been that way since 2013. Yeah, yeah. 
So, however, however, here's what we're going to try to do tonight. I'm going to take the remaining people, and I would like to propose to somebody else. Uh, after watching the select board, I guess I could make the motion myself, although I typically try to refrain from that. I'll, I'll make the motion, Chuck. I, I, okay, well, Jim, if you want to make the motion, the motion would be to approve Kathy and Ben for reappointment uh, for a three-year term as alternates. Okay, I will make an, a motion, uh, as Chuck had uh, indicated, Kathy and Ben to be alternates for the remainder of their uh, 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 for a three year term. For a three year term. Okay. Now so there's somebody some... else that expires. <laughs> okay, Bob seconded that motion. Are there any other questions? Comments? Okay, I'll do a quick roll call vote. Kathy. Abstain. Abstain. <laughs> Jan. Yes. Ellen. Yes. John. Yes. Paul. Yes. Jim. Yes. Bob. Yes. Okay. So those three are now taken care of. No. And now, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, sorry. Two. two. Those two. So now we have Chuck. Dan. And we're gonna and 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 just to be sure, John, we're gonna put you in there. Jan and John and Paul. And I'm, we're we're gonna nominate you now uh, for three year terms. Now all we need is uh, Bob Hardy to make the motion. <laughs> I'll move that motion. Make the motion. For Jan, John, and Paul oh. to be nominated for a three-year term. I second. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded. Kathy, how do you vote? I yes. Jan. I'm assuming I should abstain on myself and then a yes on the other two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jan, you can vote what for yourself. It? That's okay. Can I? I don't like that idea. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yes. John. Oops, we just John. lost John. We lost John. Paul. Uh, oh. Yes, in favor of the much qualified candidates. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Jim Cropsey. Yay. Uh, John, unmoot your, moot your <laughs> Okay. Okay, it passes. <laughs> now. So at this point, there are three of us, uh, Chuck, Bob, and Helen, who will expire in 2023. Uh, Kathy and Ben will expire in 2024, along with, uh, and John, I know that you were uh, supposed to be 2022, but the way I look at it is, if there is becomes an issue we can always say we can adjust the terms um in the future but otherwise we have uh uh Jan, john and paul as uh, for three-year terms excellent so we'll get all this paperwork done kathy is going to make a visit one of these days in the upcoming as Cindy's still in Florida on vacation, I think. Um, and she's going to go down and ask to see the file and the paperwork on uh, all the appointments from the Conservation Commission. And if, if it's true that it needs to go back to that cycle of three, three, and three, so we'll, we'll make some adjustments in the future. But anyway, it's done for now. Okay, uh, the next item is election for offices for the next year. I move Chuck Mitchell as chair for the next year. Uh, the motion fails for a lack of a second. No, I Helen seconded. Third. <laughs> John and <laughs> Four. Helen seconded it. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, so we only have one vote. 
And I would nominate uh, Helen <laughs> and Bob as co co vice chairs. Is I'll second comment? that. Okay, Paul. So for the uh, proposed slate of officers to continue uh, for next year, all those in favor? Kathy? Yes. Helen? Yes. And I'm standing on myself. Helen. Yes. Oh. Jim? Yes. Bob? Yes. Dan? Yes. Unanimous vote. Okay, so there we are. <laughs> on, let's see. Correspondence, Kathy? Um, we have, let me see here, got too many papers. Barriers, they're doing something in the water, but 1,000 something, Waconia Road. 1,015, they're um, taking a large lot and it looks like they're gonna pave it over. DES has asked for additional information. Um, also, at 1023 Laconia Road, they have been given a permit to impact 460 square feet of bank and put stuff in. On the 1015, they've asked for more information because the owner of the land owns the land around it and so did not contact the butters. And they had some questions about drainage. Okay. Also, Pat Constantino contacted Chuck about something about KRM that they were mucking about in the brook between the funeral home and KRM, but we haven't heard anything back. But that's potential. Did, did everyone see the pictures? Yes. I thought I forwarded them to everyone. I didn't see the pictures, Chuck. I saw the notice on it, but I might have missed the pictures. You wait just a second. I'll see if I can uh, pull it up. I think. Keep talking amongst yourselves. <laughs> They were digging ditches. Well, she didn't contact DES. She contacted her lawyer. She allegedly contacted DES. So we have no idea if DES, DES was actually contacted. Right? Right. Dan, Chuck's looking for that. Um, you had said you'd come to the next park commission meeting, and we missed. Our next one is April, the first, uh, second Monday in April, um, April 12th. Would you be available to make a pitch? Let me take a peek right now at my schedule. So April 12th. Let's see. Who's your friend? Uh, our new puppy. <laughs> he or she is cute. It's a she, yeah, it's a she, Callie. It's like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find the email on uh, right now, but I will uh, find it and send it back out. Uh, you can see that what she reported was that it, uh, it had to do with uh, the backhoe, be, the work being done by KRM Landscaping, and it showed, she said that they were putting a pipe in, I thought she said across the brook, but um, it shows a flow of water and a ditch that's right up to the flow of water. And I believe in her email or text to me, she did say um, that in fact, uh, she had contacted DES, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I thought in the email check, she said she contacted the land use office with, for them to contact DES. I, if I, it was in the email. I don't know. I didn't feel like DES was definitely going to be contacted. 
Chuck, I just forwarded that to you. You did, okay. Um, what, it's the, did you say it was the 12th of April, Bob? Yes. I'm sorry, okay. I am working. You're working, okay. <laughs> My schedule is just, it's working nights is... <laughs> yeah, nice no, time. I understand, so. <laughs> We'll get you in sometime before okay. spring. So, so, um, so sex so the second week of May would be the next, right? Second Correct. Monday. Okay. Uh, John, what what email address did you send it to? I sent it to. Let's see. Um, Mitchell at uh, Metrocast, I think it was. Um, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'm looking right now in my uh, inbox. I don't right now see it, but. Um, to um, see Mitchell at Metrocast, yeah. I mean, it's got some pictures, so it might take a while or something, but regardless. Okay, something is loading right now all right there it is yeah. pat wrote pieces of care i'm bringing up site to lay pipe the brook between them and smart funeral home des has been called and i have been told leanne is working <laughs> on it with the owner. okay there you go there's one of the pictures. Is that enough? Yeah, that's a pretty good sized ditch. Yeah, pretty good sized ditch. Yeah. I have not gone down there, but I'll see what I can do tomorrow about taking a look in there. And the other picture, I'm going to move something here. There's the other picture. But anyway, so, uh, and John in the email. DES uh, has been called, it says, but I have been told that Leanne is working on it with the owner, whatever that means. I guess in the past we've usually just decided that uh, it doesn't mean much. So I was going to say uh, after what Kathy presented earlier about their minutes and everything, who knows if DES was actually called? Mm -hmm. I'll well, check into that tomorrow. Too. Okay. Anybody? Anyone got anything else? Um, I don't know if everybody knows that the uh, Anchorage was sold. No, I didn't know that. Yes, the Anchorage has been sold to Roach Realty. Um, and they are, I believe they're the ones who developed Southdown. Uh, and no, John, 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 it wasn't. It was P.K. Zyla. It's Zyla. No, I got uh, Roach Realty as an investor in it or oh, something. Okay. But, well, they may very well be, but yeah. it was uh, like P.K. Zyla from Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, I believe they were an investor of the piece across the street up on the hill originally, or one of them. Hmm. Anyway, go ahead, John. So um, one of the things that came up, I believe, in November um, at the end of a planning board meeting I was watching was that um, our land use coordinator was in touch with a um, developer who wished to purchase the anchorage, but they wanted to turn it into condos. Um, and they, our land use coordinator stated that um, we have an ordinance 
um, that I mean not an ordinance, but a um, in our zoning laws that was ruled out. I think we voted on it two years ago, and the land said that well they can put uh, storage areas in there. That's permitted. So unless we change it back so it allows for condos, they're just going to put storage units in there. And the rest of the planning said board said, yeah, we can't allow that. St um, condos are better than storage units. Okay, I just uh, put up on the screen. Yeah. yeah. The, the the thing is kind of funny that you know somebody would spend millions. I would guess at least five, six million dollars or more on that piece of property and put storage units, or were they just trying to get their way? Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing because they can make a south town, they can make condos, and make twenty million dollars in this real estate market. They're not going to put yeah. storage. And you know, Roach Realty, um, they are the ones who did the South Down, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. Although so, it, this does, is it does say here that they said that Roach sold it. But I'm not, I, I'm trying to see mm -hmm. if there's anything in here that said that they are a partner. I, I could the, have some of it wrong, but I'll have to check. Um, I will also share one more thing that came across today. Um, in an email uh, exchange with Lisa Eggleston, uh, who's the head of the chair of the uh, Winnesquam Watershed Network, she had gotten contact with uh, some people from uh, that live up on Lake Wakewas. Mm-hmm. Wakewas. And also, yeah, what was anyway, and that, and also a member of the uh, Meredith Conservation Commission, and she what what the comment had to do was, and, and I could, if anybody really wants, I could share that uh, email. In a nutshell, uh, she said that large money people are buying up big homes that are for sale, and, and then, for example, and one was quoted that to be, it was a four bedroom house that was an older house. And then all of a sudden they put it up on like, uh, I don't know, one of those uh, short term rental things. We don't, I wouldn't say which one because I don't really know, but apparently they had been advertising it as for 16 people, a house for 16 people and Apparently, they have sold out for the entire summer. Like that. Mm. And yeah. one of the issues had to do with uh, this is an issue that they'd had in Laconia, if you'll recall. Um, doing a lot of homeowners were renting, doing the short term weekly mm. or whatever, bi weekly. Mm. But apparently, uh, you know. They're renting this thing for like ten thousand dollars a week for sixteen people, and they've already sold out for the entire summer. And wow. of course, the big, big question there was, you know, an old septic system. How how's it going to handle that for sixteen people? At any rate, it goes on and on. But you know, that whole thing of short-term rentals, no matter which agency you go through, whether it's Verbo or the the other more popular one. Um, everything is just selling and renting like crazy. Right. Mm. Just to make you aware. Yeah, they're not putting no. put storage containers on the Anchorage property. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're going to have to have condos. <laughs> One or the other. Make up your mind. <laughs> you know, when we bought that property, a uh, uh, a number of years ago, everything on the side toward Tilton was all wet. Right. And so I am, I, I don't know how we could do this, uh, but maybe we need to contact Mr. Zyla to see if he's willing to take any of that property and put it under a conservation easement. 
you you'd think that the abutters, um, you know, that already have the kind of little summer houses over there would like that wet side preserved as a little boundary. I guess I'm concerned about condos and if you have, let's say, 60 condos in there and everybody's going to want a boat. They're all going to want a boat. Right. <laughs> And the biggest, the biggest problem, I think, as we all know, is that everything on the Winnesquam Bridge side, that whole area in there is so shallow, mm -hmm. you can't put in, you know, except <laughs> that's a very, very shallow area that goes way out, must go out a um, couple hundred yards. Yeah. Wasn't there a proposal uh, for tiny homes for that? Well, or that's gone. Yes. And, yeah. And, and they 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 were just going to bring them in on trailers, and uh, and and that was that. No, it's gone. That was the same developer that's doing School Street. Oh, okay. Hmm. I dare them to put houses with proper septic, so we can actually get some tax dollars from this. <laughs> Apparently, they're going to reopen it, according to the article, I believe, it, reopen it this summer as they have in the last few summers, and then we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> Anything else for the good of the organization? Could you send me that address, Chuck? I've got a big house here. I might be able to rent some area out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my dog doesn't like that. Your dog doesn't like that, Paul. By the way, I shared this with Kathy earlier today. Let me uh, give me a, a moment to see if I can pull it up. Something that was very funny. Um, it said for people who are getting tired of uh, Zoom meetings, that there's this uh, thing that that you could uh, you could put on your computer that would sound like a baby crying or <laughs> or, or a dog barking. Uh, anyway, all of these different kinds of things, and that you can load it onto your computer so that you can always uh, have these sounds show up. <laughs> So you can get out of going to a meeting or get out of a meeting. It was on CNET, if you've ever been to CNET. Uh, give me a minute, half a minute. We've come a long ways. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> I've gone back. Yeah. So, Paul, are you surviving okay? Uh, Oklahoma's okay. I'm okay. I've, I've gotten beyond dull. I'm working on board. <laughs> you left unsupervised? I didn't say that. By the way, this is what it is. Whoop. Wait a minute. Right here where it says Zoom. Sabotaging your meeting. I would think a criteria being for one of these meetings would do they have coffee and donuts? <laughs> <laughs> so it says need an excuse to get out of your Zoom meeting, you can get a barking dog. I've got the dog. Okay, and then it tells you it's called Zoom Escaper. Escaper, great. It said you can go to Zoom Escaper and enable your microphone. It gives you all the directions on how to set it up. So the next time you have a Zoom call, you can, oh, it reminded me of that, Paul, because I heard your dog. Well, Chuck, you've got that barking dog on your doorbell. Uh, I took that out, I took it out. <laughs> And we don't have that now because I have my Zoom, I mean, my, uh, yeah, camera. 
on the front camera on the door. But you're right, I did have that. Yep, you could push the doorbell and it would bark. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you very much. Enjoy uh, this lovely weather. <laughs> oh no, I gotta go. <laughs> Uh oh, John's radioactive. Uh, I think they got. The, they got I the want to wish you good luck at your planning board meeting tomorrow night. Good luck, John. Awesome. Harness. Enough that they left the pole. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care.